If the stars hadn't aligned, two of the most remarkable spacecraft ever launched never would have gone off the ground. In this case, the stars were actually planets, the four largest in the solar system. Some 60 years ago, they were slowly wheeling into an array that had last occurred during the presidency of Thomas Jefferson in the early years of the 19th century. For a while, the rare planetary set piece unfolded largely unnoticed. The first person to call attention to it was an aeronautics doctoral student at the California Institute of Technology named Gary Flandro. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, identical in every detail, were launched within 15 days of each other in the summer of 1977. After nearly 45 years in space, they are still functioning, sending data back to Earth every day from beyond the solar system's most distant known planets. They have traveled farther and lasted longer than any other spacecraft in history. As we are here to talk about their cameras, this is the renowned Voyager 1 photo of a pale blue dot that shows Earth as a small pixel 6 billion kilometers away. The components that produced us are all there in the tiny blue dot as we call home, even though this photo was taken before many of you were even born. However, this day is noteworthy. The cameras were permanently turned off just 34 minutes after this photo was taken, rendering Voyager 1 absolutely blind. Since then, the spaceship has moved 24 billion kilometers away from Earth, making it the farthest distant object ever built by humans. So why were the cameras turned off? What might we witness if cameras were turned back on? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. The Initiation it was 1965 and the era of space exploration was barely underway. The Soviet Union had launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, only eight years earlier. Flandro, who was working part-time at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, had been tasked with finding the most efficient way to send a space probe to Jupiter, or perhaps even out to Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. Using a favorite precision tool of 20th century engineers, a pencil, he charted the orbital paths of those giant planets and discovered something intriguing. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, all four would be strung like pearls on a celestial necklace in a long arc with Earth. This coincidence meant that a space vehicle could get a speed boost from the gravitational pull of each giant planet it passed, as if being tugged along by an invisible cord that snapped at the last second, flinging the probe on its way. Flandreau calculated that the repeated gravity assists, as they were called, would cut the flight time between Earth and Neptune from 30 years to 12. There's just one catch. The alignment happened only once every 176 years. To reach the planets while the lineup lasted, a spacecraft would have to be launched by the mid-1970s, and thus Voyager 1 and 2 happened. Early in their travels, four decades ago, the Voyagers gave astonished researchers the first close-up views of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn revealing the existence of active volcanoes and fissured ice fields on worlds astronomers had thought would be as inert and crater-pocked as our own moon. In 1986, Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to fly past Uranus. Three years later, it passed Neptune. So far, it is only the spacecraft to have made such journeys. Now, as pioneering interstellar probes more than 12 billion miles from Earth, they are simultaneously delighting and confounding theorists with a series of unexpected discoveries about that uncharted region. Their remarkable odyssey is finally winding down. Over the past three years, NASA has shut down heaters and other non-essential components, eking out the spacecraft's remaining energy stores to extend their unprecedented journeys to about 2030. For the Voyager scientists, many of whom have worked on the mission since its inception, it's a bittersweet time. They are now confronting the end of a project that far exceeded all their expectations. We're at 44 and a half years, says Ralph McNutt a physicist at the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, APL, who has devoted much of his career to the Voyagers. So we've done 10 times the warranty on the darn things. The Voyager and its cameras. Several records have been broken by the Voyager space probes while they have been in orbit. In addition to being the farthest objects in space, they have also remained in operation for the longest time, more than 45 years. It is astounding to consider that computers and systems created on Earth in the 1970s are still working after so much time spent in the hostile environment of space. The camera system on Voyager 1 is a prime example of how it was equipped with cutting-edge technology that was years ahead of its time. Two Vitacon cameras, which are effectively very early television cameras employing analog to digital technology, are present on Voyager 1. They are capable of capturing grayscale images in 8 bits 
with an effective resolution of 800 by 800 pixels. One had a wide-angle lens for taking detailed pictures of the planets as the probe approached them. The other, which was zoomed in, had a narrow angle lens that allowed it to view each planet in greater detail, and of course, to glance back at our solar system as it descended toward the horizon. Yet, the light passed via an optic system that allowed it to create colored images before it reached these cameras. This was a filter wheel with filters in the colors violet, blue, green, and orange. Voyager would take multiple images of its subject using each of its filters. Only the color of light would flow through the filter as it was being illuminated. All other colors would be absorbed. Although the photos were still captured in grayscale, each one contained regions with varying brightness levels where the light was more responsive to specific colors. After being transmitted to Earth, each of these photos was saturated with its corresponding filter color and merged to create a full color image. In essence, this is how the human eye functions since it has three color sensing cones, red, green, and blue, which when combined, allow us to see a variety of colors. The real magic with Voyager, however, takes place inside the Vitacon tube. This light enters the Vitacon tube after going through the lens and filter wheel. The photons first strike a transparent faceplate constructed of tin oxide that is immediately followed by a photoconductive target plate. Free electrons are produced when the photons strike the target plate. The more free electrons are produced at a given spot, the more intense the light is. Gaps are then left on the target plate as a result of these free electrons being drawn to the faceplate. After this, a cathode at the back of the tube discharges electrons toward the target plate to scan the image. As soon as they touch the target plate, these electrons fill in the gaps to produce an electric current. The imaging data is contained in the signal, which may be now be transferred back to Earth. Yet, transferring the data from billions of kilometers far is exceedingly complex and many things could go wrong. Why were the cameras turned off? What occurs next once the light is converted into a signal by Voyager's cameras? Voyager would save about 5 million bits of information, or a little more than half of a megabyte, for each photograph it took. Sending such data back is incredibly challenging when your spacecraft is billions of kilometers away, even though it might not seem like much of today's standards. Voyager 1 had a maximum data rate of approximately 115,000 bits per second when it was closest to Earth. The time it would take to relay a whole image back to Earth at this rate is 43 seconds. Now that the transmission rate is just about 160 bits per second, sending just one image would take more than 8 hours. Moreover, Voyager 1 is currently 23 billion kilometers away, so it would actually take 21 hours for that signal to reach us. The signal from the Vitacon camera is recorded onto magnetic tape since the camera can create images far faster than it can send data. This information accumulates over time and can be sent when Voyager 1 has a strong connection to Earth. But why hasn't Voyager's cameras been active for more than three decades? We must consider Voyager 1's location at the time of its most recent image in order to respond to this. The famous photo of the pale blue dot was obtained from a location 6 billion kilometers away from Earth. The spacecraft was now so far away that everything looked like a tiny dot. Also, the spacecraft was moving in a direction that would eventually make it the first spacecraft to leave the solar system and enter interstellar space. So, the team intended to give priority to the equipment that would detect interstellar plasma, an indication that Voyager 1 had departed our solar system in order to determine when this occurred. Yet, Voyager 1 was already 13 years old and had a long way to go before it would enter interstellar space. The engineers had to significantly increase the spacecraft's lifespan in order to still be able to communicate with it at that point. Voyager 1 is powered by an RTG which converts heat from a radioactive substance into electricity, like many other spacecraft. As a result of an annual power output degradation of around 4 watts, Voyager 1 is currently only producing 57% of its initial power output. A little over 40 watts are used by the camera system alone. The scientists started turning off several Voyager equipment to save power in order to buy the spacecraft some extra time. The researchers also removed the Voyager software that controlled the camera in order to conserve memory. The software and the systems that were utilized to examine the photographs on Earth are no longer even in use. What will we see? Also, it's possible that the camera's heaters will no longer work because they have been subjected to the hostile conditions of space for many years. What would they capture if they were turned back on, assuming the cameras were in working order? Contrary to popular belief, Voyager 1 won't be in total darkness because of its proximity to the Sun. Even though the Sun is now 23 billion kilometers distant, it is still 16 times brighter than the moonlight on Earth, making it sufficient to read a book. But there simply isn't anything noteworthy or sizable enough to photograph near Voyager. Today's view from Voyager would be gloomy, but you could still make out the Sun and other planets as small dim pixels. The fact that the star constellations in our sky will remain unchanged while traversing 23 billion kilometers is arguably the most amazing thing. 
Voyager would have to travel millions of light years merely to see a tiny change in the stars if it wanted a new view of the galaxy. Millions of years after we are gone and a long time after we have lost communication with the space probe, Voyager 1 will finally do this. Do you agree with that? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.